Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing a video on the look that I'm wearing right here. It is one of my most natural go-to eyeshadow looks that I have found my way to. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. So jumping into the tutorial, into the tutorial, we're taking the Morphe M218 and we are going to be taking the third shade from the Jaclyn Hill Top Row Palette transition shade and we're going to take that in and we're going to buff that in to our eyeballs. We're just going to blow it out as much as we can um, or as much as you'd like to blow it out. This is just one of my natural go-to looks. It's one of the taupey kind of natural looks that I found works for me anytime I'm doing something or anytime I'm doing something simple just because this look is easy to achieve doesn't really take much time so we're just gonna keep buffing that in there until it's well blended out and we have no harsh lines because if you start off with harsh lines from the very beginning it's gonna be kind of hard to get rid of them then so we're just gonna be taking more color we're going to buff it back and forth. At first, I just go back and forth, and then I do little circular motions, windshield wiper motions, just to get that color in as much as I can. So we're taking the Morphe Y15. And we are going to be taking um, the shades that I will be using for the the main shades that I will be using for this eye look. I will be linking everything in the description as well as the shades that they were. Um, I'll just look them up and I'll put them in the description for you guys just so you guys can know the exact shades that I used. But most of the shades that I did use in this look did come from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. So I will be linking everything in the description and we're just taking that brush, we're packing it on on the outer edge of the eye, not going in so much on the inner corner. We're just taking it, packing it in and going in multiple wiper motions on the outer part of the eye. As you can see here, that's where I'm focusing the color at the very beginning just because in the inner corner we are going to go in and cut the crease a little bit so we don't want a lot of color on the inner eye. Most of it, we want it on the outer eye. Okay, so here I'm just taking that Morphe M218, which is my best friend when it comes to blending. We're just going to take that and we're going to buff everything out just so we make sure we don't have any harsh lines. We're taking that on the inner and outer corner. Now here you can see me going back with that gold blending brush. And I took a color from the Morphe 35T palette, one of their taupey palettes. And I took the top left um, shadow in the very corner. And that's what I'm putting all over just to kind of do, give it kind of a taupey feel. Because I didn't really want to give it a um, natural type of feel. I wanted to go for like a taupey-ish type of thing. So here we are taking our flat shader brush. And like I said, we were going to be cutting the crease a little bit. We're just going to be taking that in, following our crease, or following the crease that you would want to make on your eye. We're going to take that in, and we're going to take our fingers, and we're going to buff that out a little bit until we are ready to set the crease itself, or put any type of um, shadow on it. And I usually don't use white white shadows I usually mix a white shadow with like a dirty white like a beige color type of thing and that's what I'm gonna be doing here just to set everything because um, I didn't really want to give it a white look but I just wanted to mix whatever colors I could because if you have a palette full of colors you might as well put the colors to use okay now we're going back with that gold brush and we are going to be blending that line that transitions into the crease. We're going to be blending it out just so it doesn't have a harsh effect on your eye. And you can see it magically transition into your crease.
And we're just taking more of that white shade and that um, dirty white shade that I have from the Morphe 35O palette. If you have that palette, I'm pretty sure you know which shades I'm talking about. They're literally right on top of each other. It's the white shade and then the bottom shade to it. And here I'm just contemplating my life. Just like always. Okay, so now we're highlighting the brow bone with a highlighting shade. Anything that you have will work. And then we're taking our foundation, which is a cover effects in the shade G40. And we're also taking um, the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Foundation in the shade 105. And I'm mixing these two with my Morphe M439. It's my handy dandy brush. You can see I have much love for it. And I was getting it ready to do what it was made to do in life. Um, this brush is really good just to buff any foundation out. It doesn't leave you any streak marks, anything at all. It leaves you great coverage along with the foundation that you use. It doesn't really suck up a lot of product, which is what I like about the brush itself. Because you can see here with the foundation that I have on my face, I'm going to cover everything, including my forehead. So this brush does give you a lot of coverage as well as the foundations that I use. You also have to keep that in mind because I did use two, but the brush itself, I have re-fallen in love with it again. I usually just use my beauty blender, but there is phases to where I go back to this brush just because it is so good and it covers everything because like it does not leave streak marks and it is really, really inexpensive to be this great of a brush. And I've had it for like a year or two, so it, it hangs in there. And I didn't know what was going on in the background because my sister was singing, you know, just minding her own business. Then in these takes, I can just show you the combination of these foundations because I was really surprised of how nicely they combined and how smooth it was, as you can see there. So I'm just blending out my concealer with my Forever 21 beauty sponge. And once we're done with that, we're also going to take the beauty blender and we're going to buff out our foundation just a little more just so we could give it that airbrushed effect um, just in case we did miss any spots of the face. The beauty blender usually perfects everything. and the magic of applying lashes with an editing. Voila! So now the only thing that I'm doing um, right here just to make this eye look pop is put some of that white shade on the inner rim of my bottom lash line. This will help you out a lot. And what I also did is I did put mascara. This is the mascara that I used. I don't really put a lot, as you can see here, just because it does run down my cheeks a little bit, and that is not a good look. Okay, so now we're contouring, and we're going to take the brush that I always use, which is I think is the R39, um, and we're just going to contour our face just so our cheekbones can cut somebody. Here I'm just perfecting anything that I have left and I'm obviously surprised and why is my tongue yellow. We can just skip by that and we're contouring the other cheek so we can cut even more people. And then after this we are going to be applying our highlighter. Afterwards we will be done with this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys so much and I will see you guys soon. And that concludes the video for today. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe, of course. Love you guys so much, and I hope you enjoy the video. Bye!